America went to war, a war that everyone believed in. It was a world war, war in the Pacific, war in Europe. The toll would be high. Thousands of pilots would be needed on all fronts, including the home front. As men went to war, women took their places in factories, in offices, in many roles women had never filled before. And some women would join the war effort in a special way. Girls organize air ferry unit. Uncle Sam has a daring experiment underway at Newcastle Army Air Force Base. The Air Transport Command is hiring girl pilots to ferry military planes around the countryside. What will they think of next? These gals will soon be zooming from factory to port, speeding those planes to our boys overseas. They're civil service now, but if plans work out, they'll be in this man's army soon. Nancy Love commanded the new woman's squadron. She had pushed hard to make it a reality. She knew there was a serious shortage of ferry pilots, and she wanted to prove that women pilots like herself could contribute to the war effort in a new way, as pilots. Initially, her idea was met with disbelief and rejection, but her personal courage and determination and the hard realities of war won out over prejudice. Given the go-ahead by the Air Transport Command, she went out and found 25 of the best women pilots in the country. With her leadership, they would make history. Nancy Love was a celebrated and highly competent pilot. Nicknamed the flying freshman of Vassar, she had learned to fly at 16. She dropped out of college to pursue her love of flying and make a career of aviation. She started with the Federal Bureau of Air Commerce, doing air marking and test piloting. She flew in competitive air meets all over the country and helped start a commuter airline in Boston. Then she joined the Air Transport Command as a civilian employee. She set high qualifications for her squadron, including a minimum of 500 hours certified flying time. Yet despite their skills, the pilots of the newborn woman's auxiliary ferrying squadron met many obstacles. They were restricted to flying only the smallest and lightest aircraft. Their competence was constantly questioned and tested. But Nancy Love would find a way to overcome the restrictions and the doubts. She was determined to prove her pilots could fly any plane in the air, not just the lightest trainers, but the newest fighters and the biggest bombers. She would do it first, then others would follow. Before long, she was establishing new women's squadrons at ferry bases in California, Texas, and Michigan. Jacqueline Cochran was the heir to Amelia Earhart's mantle as America's most famous woman pilot. She was a speed racer and a record setter. In 1938, she won the Bendix Trophy in the National Air Races, flying a modified Army fighter plane to victory. From 1939 to 41, she pressed for a women's role in military aviation, and it was a large role participation in all non-combat flying missions. But the Army Air Force rejected her proposals as grandiose and untimely. So she went to work for the British, who were already using women pilots. By late 1942, the situation had changed, and Jackie Cochran was called home from England to start another and larger women's program, the Women Air Force Service Pilots, the WASP. From then on, she would push to expand the role of women pilots, including her goal of full military status. One young woman who heard the call of the WASP was Delta Ben. They were always my idols after I started flying, you know, and knew that this was going on. I thought this is, it was just way beyond my wildest imaginings. Avenger Field, Sweetwater, Texas, was the home of WASP flight training. The WASP recruits, under civil service for now, but promised military status later, would learn here to fly the Army way. This meant months of rigorous training, ground school, cross-country navigation, and more. Each recruit would be put to the severest test time and again. And if she made it through, the reward was great. 
a pair of silver wings, the badge of an Army Air Force pilot. As we had these briefings and as I saw the things that were going on and just the whole picture coming together, I think it kind of hit me how important the things that we were doing were. didn't think much about anything except what you were supposed to do and what you could do to help. And you had a very strong feeling of uh, doing your part and, and this is all you thought about. We were in a, a very serious war. Graduation was the realization of the dream, so to speak, uh, because right up until you had that diploma in your hand and the wings pinned on your lapel, you were never really sure. <laughs> Delta Ben won her wings in September 1944 and was now a wasp. She joined almost 900 wasps in service throughout the United States. So the wasp graduates flew off to operational assignments with high hopes and new skills to contribute to the war effort. The future looked bright with accomplishment. and Cochran's dream was coming true. The WASP were performing more and more different flying jobs at home, overcoming resistance and making sacrifices, proving their skills in testing, training, and ferrying missions. The WASP were getting the job done. Officer training would make them ready, but it would take an act of Congress to create for the Army Air Force a new kind of soldier called woman pilot. The official militarization of the WASP had long been promised. On the flight line, the women waited for word from Washington. But the word received was not the word they wanted. The WASP bill was defeated, and worse, it was recommended that the program be abandoned. After 60 million air miles flying every type of plane in the American arsenal, the WASP would fly no more. If there ever was a doubt in anyone's mind women can become skillful pilots. The wasps have dispelled that doubt. Frankly, I didn't know in 1941 whether a slip of a girl could fight the controls of a B-17 in heavy weather that they all would encounter in operational flying. Those of us who have been flying for 20 or 30 years knew that flying an airplane was something that you do not learn overnight. 
But Miss Conklin said that carefully selected young women could be trained to fly our combat type planes. So it was only right that we took advantage of every skill that we as a nation possess. Now in 1944, with two years behind us, the WASP first started flying with the Air Force. We can come to only one conclusion. The entire operation has been a tremendous success. I don't know, it seems incredible that a person can have three so different emotions. Happiness, sorrow, pride. I have all three of those today. I'm very happy that we've trained a thousand women to fly the Army way. I think it is going to be more than aviation than anyone realizes. I'm very happy that General Arnold and General Yant, who made this possible, are here for the final phase of this wonderful program, this program that will go down in history, not only in history, but I'm sure it's going to do something that is so vital and has been so vitally needed in aviation for so many years, and that is women's interest. And I'm sure that if there's a reason to call you girls back after December 20th, that all of you will respond and we'll have probably 95% of you back in the Air Forces anyway. Yeah. 